सो होप यू आर फाइंडिंग आर चैनल हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग वॉल एंड वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल कैरियर वाइज सो टुडे वी हैव कम अप विथ एन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो एंड दैट टू इन द वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम एंड एज वी डिस्कस वी आर गोइंग टू कम अप विथ द एडवांस्ड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एस एफ आई एस रिमेंबर दर इज एन अदर सीरीज कमिंग अप इन दिस चैनल विच इज सी प्रोग्रामिंग and this this series is going to be very 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 informational very very knowledgeable and we are going to come up with very 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 i would say lot of programming techniques that going to help you maybe your friend maybe your colleague maybe your son daughter whoever it is right so please do watch out our channel and like subscribe share and do the comment below without wasting time let's start the next topic is regarding the asapo methodology which is the most popular methodology by which the sap implementations are happening so what is exactly the asap methodology as we discussed there are a lot of processes by which the project can be implemented like a uh, waterfall model iterative waterfall model uh, we have a uh, spiral model we have uh, prototype models so those models are good for different different softwares but for sap implementation sap introduced a methodology which is called asap methodology okay so a stands for accelerated accelerated sap implementation methodology that's how it is called as asap methodology right so this asap methodology has five stages or you can say five phases of the project which includes the preparation we call that kick off or preparation then we have business blueprint phase which again divide into two parts agis and to be configuration and realization again this is we call the build phase where you have uh, configuration from the functional end uh, and development from the app end or the development team and uh, realization means doing the fat and uat so configuration and realization and after that we go for the testing and finally we will go for the final preparation where we have doing all the sit uat Uh, we take the business inputs and we fix all the stuff as uh, as we captured then finally we do the cutover and go live once the cutover and go live is complete we go for the support so these are the five stages which we are going to discuss in detail for this session so so what is the first uh, requirement what we need to develop a project right so there are different kind of processes so those processes we call the pre sale processes pre sale and sale processes where all these uh, how to get the project is happening once the project is captured or the project is awarded to a company then the real asap methodology is started so the agreement between the sap partner and sap customer okay so the agreement is done from there all the stuff is started so the first stuff we started which is called scoping scoping means what exactly we are going to deliver in this project or in this time period that is called scoping okay so this scoping again divided into different types the types number of uh, customers so when we do the scoping what we do we have three kind of um, requirement we divide the requirement to three perspective okay so the best perspective is definitely that requirement should be there so we call that must have okay so that requirement should be implemented or must have okay the okay. second necessary okay necessary means if it will be there it is good okay so but you should do that 
like that should have so must have and should have finally they suggest if you add this thing it will be better in future or in enhancement or in performance so good to have so must have should have good to have so we do the scoping into three types must have should have and good to have right so in that we divided all the requirements during the scoping then formation of the steering committee now steering committee is the most important thing in a project not in sap projects in all the projects so the steering committee actually includes all the authorities the customer himself the partners the members the vendors all this stuff because if there would be any change in the project any type uh, divert in the timeline any decisions need to be taken for the project it should be taken by the steering committee so steering committee is the most powerful uh, committee in a project so everybody will report to the steering committee once in a month or weekly once to explain the progress in the project right so that's how the steering committee need to be that that is the centralized authority which will check the progress of the project check the scoping of the project and the details these days we have agile scrum concept where we have uh, product owners okay still then we also have the steering committee in which we give the details right then we have kickoff meetings now kickoff meetings once the steering committee formed will go for the global uh, mobilization process mobilization means we bring all the team members into one platform okay to start the project and once they come into one platform we go for the kickoff okay so the first phase is over the preparation phase is over what we did actually we define the scope we define the steering committee we created the team and we started the project that is your preparation or kickoff phase second phase is called business blueprint phase now what is business blueprint business blueprint means how the project need to be implemented now if we need to know how to project need to be implemented you need to know two part one is ajiz other one is to be ajiz means what is existing what is currently the process how the business is currently functioning so that is called ajiz now to gather this information the consultants need to go to the business need to do lot of workshops meetings with the business and list out the business processes and the current system so that is called ajiz process now to capture that what we do particularly from the sap iso perspective if you go to the sap iso perspective we have majorly four models one is customer services cs then metering which is device management then we have billing and then collection which is finance so we divide the team into four groups in some cases we also add some other teams like the integration team which is technical team but we need to understand what are the integration points which are the external systems we need to integrate so the pi or currently po process integration or process orchestration team would be there then we have analytical team which is like bw team or reporting team so what they do they collect what are the reports they are looking for from this project okay apart from that there are technical teams like basis team the security team or the grc team we have the uh, abap team which is technical team and obviously to check the quality we need the testing team so sometimes we include one one person from these teams to understand the perspective very clearly but the major role is the consultant role the functional consultant role they gather all the business processes and the current system requirements and how it is functioning once they understand as as you are a sap consultant you understand the product 
product means SAP and you understand the business processes uh, from the business, now you need to create a mapping sheet, okay? Which need to be mapped from Aziz to to B. So, uh, so what are the product offering and what are the requirements? Okay, that mapping process is done. We call that gap analysis. So you collected the requirement, you know the product, and you do the gap analysis. Okay. Once the gap analysis is done, you understand how many customization need to be done. What is the customization? like the product as SAP, what it offering and what we can achieve by configuration. That is the <clears throat> product. And what are the things which the current business has the practicing and we don't offering as a product. So what do we need to do? We need to change the product, tweak the product to map that product to the business processes. So that is called customization. So when you do a gap analysis between RGH and 2B, okay, you are getting the output as a RICEFW. RICEFW. RICEFW is a very technical term. Okay, so where R stands for report, I stands for interfaces, C stands for changes or convergence, E stands for like enhancement, F stands for uh, workflows, uh, sorry, F stands for forms and W stands for workflows, so rise up W. So then you can get a list how many customization you can do and what are the configuration you need to do. So once you get that report, we move to the next phase called build phase or realization phase or configuration phase. So in build phase, actually we have two parts. One part is to do the configuration we call them baseline configuration. And the second part, we, what we do, we develop the product. We uh, develop the programs. We do the customization, okay? And once that customization is over, again, we do the UAT, which is called user acceptance testing that is done by the technical team. And we do the FAT, which is called functional acceptance testing that is done by the functional team, okay? So once the UAT FAT done, the configuration done, the build done, the next phase is to check the quality. And that is how we move to the preparation phase. So in preparation or testing phase, what we do, we check all these requirements from the blueprint, like additional configuration, what we required, uh, because during the development and during the customization, a lot of stuff need to be uh, revisit. Okay, we revisit everything. We check all the configuration. We check everything is good, well. Okay, so that is one done. Next is we are prepare ourselves for the data migration. What is data migration? Now you have a legacy system which is currently functioning, and we are moving to a new system which is the SAP. So the migration is done from the legacy system to the new system. Okay. So that migration preparation need to be done. The data need to be collected from the business. It should be uh, prepared as for your database. The cleansing need to be happen. All those things need to be done in this preparation phase, in the uh, migration phase. Okay, once you are prepared, all this stuff is collected. We go for the testing, testing configuration. Now testing is of many types, okay? So as I mentioned in our build phase, we already did the UAT and FAT. In preparation phase, we started with the ST, system testing. Then we go for SIT, system integration testing. Then we go for UAT. Some people go for the PT, performance testing. Some are going for VT, volumetric testing. So a lot of kind of testing are there. Now, so this, Testing phases can be enhanced or reduced based on the timeline and based on the uh, uh, based on the actual project cost. Okay, so like as I mentioned, in many cases the quality testing is not happening QT, but the ST, SIT, and UAT is must have. Some cases they don't go for 
penetration testing. Okay. Uh, some cases they go for that. They go for different different uh, security testings. Okay. Smoke testing, which is related to the integration. Uh, penetration testing, which is related to the external threats. Uh, volumetric testing, which is related to how the uh, system will perform after a long time. So all kind of testing is happening during this preparation phase. Okay. And once this testing is over, we move to the training phase. So UAT is completed. We move to the training phase. We create the documents. We hand over the documents to the support team and we train the support team and the users who will really work on the system. So the end user training, the support people training, everything going to start. Okay. And after completion of the this training processes, we go for the planning for cutover. Okay. And go live. So what is cutover? Actually, we are setting down the legacy system and going to start the new system. Okay, that is called cut over and go live. It's a very rigorous process. We plan for a longer period for that. Uh, we bring all the people under a single roof because there should not be any hassle after the go live. So we do all this uh, stuff. And once we get the uh, user acceptance testing sign off, okay, sign off means the business is okay with the product, we move for the go live. And during that process, we do all this data migration as well. Okay. So uh, there are a lot of stuff in SAP uh, which need to be included in SAP methodology. And it is the best till now methodology to implement the SAP uh, projects. So these days by using the Scrum, by using the uh, Agiles, this method is kind of a hybrid. It's hybrid into the Scrum and Agile processes. But still then, uh, the SAP methodology is one of the best methodology to implement the SAP project. Okay, once your cutover go live is over, you move for the, uh, for the support, right? So you move for the support and the support process will start, okay?